Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. You might be aware of the hunger strikes that are going on over in Guantanamo Bay. The Muslim prisoners uh, complaining there about something or other, and so they've gone on this modified hunger strike, and this just cracked me up. Let me see if I can find a story. This is how bent out of shape these Muslim prisoners. Remember, these are the people that blew up 2,973 innocent Americans on 9-11. And they're all bent out of shape. And so they've gone on this hunger strike, and they're so serious. This is according to the McClatchy Washington Bureau. They are so serious about this hunger strike that they are they have quit going to art classes. I kid you not, it's right here in the McClatchy news story. This is how serious these people are about protesting the, their treatment in Gitmo. They have quit going to art classes. These Muslim jihadists that want to slit our throats and cut off our heads, they're so upset about the way they're being treated that they've quit going to art classes. Now, every one of these Gitmo prisoners, every one of these Muslims, has a PlayStation in his cell, in his own cell. I've never owned a PlayStation in my life. And every one of these Guantanamo Bay prisoners that want to blow us up, slit our throats, and cut off their heads at our expense, we have provided every single one of them with a PlayStation unit in their own cell. And we're serving them this food. They won't eat it, so it gets thrown away. Um, within an hour, the guards systematically trash a lunch that looks like it could feed 100 people. Unopened juice bottles go into the garbage first, then styrofoam boxes of pita bread and special dietary meals, buffet tins of stewed tomatoes, rice, and sweet and sour stir-fried beef follow its hunger strike time at Guantanamo uh, Bay. Uh, let's see, they're complaining about an aggressive search of prisoners' Korans back in February. That's why they've gone on this hunger strike Prison officials say no Qurans were disrespected. No policy was changed. Uh, the protest began in Camp uh, 6, where in better times, the military would boast that up to 130 cooperative captives could eat and pray in groups, play soccer, and go to class. And troublemakers were removed one at a time. They pointed to perks like PlayStations, food pantries, and wristwatches that helped keep the... Inmates uh, cooperative. Uh, let's see if there's anything else that's in here. They are subsisting poor babies on snacks such as pita bread and peanut butter. Well, I guarantee you the 2,973 people that they killed on 9-11, they're not eating pita bread and peanut butter. They're not around to do that. They're dead. Um, all they can do, here's the. Here, this is make, doesn't this make your heart bleed? All they can do is watch TV and movies and play PlayStation. It's pretty boring for them now, said an Army uh, captain. Still, the boycott of the popular arts and life skills classes is total, and soccer games are rare. Here's how bad it is. Camp 6 has stopped requesting items from the detention camp library. They got a library. The chief librarian, who gives his name as Milton, I love that. Let's remember that. That's just a little factoid that the, the name of the librarian at Guantanamo Bay is Milton. You want to get a book from the Guantanamo Bay Library, you got to ask Milton. You want to get a game for your PlayStation, you got to put in a request to Milton. You want a book, you got to ask Milton for the book because he is the librarian. Uh, this is what Milton says. Four copies of the last Twilight episode are still in circulation as well as John Madden NFL 2013 and NBA 2K13 for the PlayStation mounted inside each, inside each Camp 6 cell block. Oh, the humanity. And today they're complaining that they're not getting bottled water. They want bottled water. The Navy Captain Robert Durand says the tap water here is fine. He says that's what I make my coffee with. That's what I use when I'm making my lunch. The tap water is fine, but they're complaining they want bottled water instead. Oh, the humanity. 
Now, back to the uh, same-sex marriage issue. This is Mike Huckabee. I got two sound bites from Mike Huckabee explaining, look, if, if it's like with the immigration issue. If the GOP embraces amnesty, they're done. They are finished. They are toast. They are history. They're in the archives. Same thing if they embrace sodomy-based marriage. The GOP will be finished. They'll be out of here. They'll be done. Now, they've got a chance to take the Senate in 2014. You've got five Democrat senators that are retiring. Tim Johnson, South Dakota, just announced he's not going to run again. Uh, And so every one of those is a winnable seat for the Republican Party. They have the chance of actually taking control of the Senate in 2014. But if they embrace gay marriage, they can forget about it. And here is Mike Huckabee talking to Kathleen Walter of Newsmax. And he explains what will happen if the GOP does a 180 on gay marriage and embraces it. Here's what he had to say. They might, and if they do, they're going to lose a large part of their base because evangelicals will take a walk. Um, And it's not because there's an anti-homosexual mood, and and nobody's homophobic that I know of. But many of us, and I consider myself included, base our standards not on the latest uh, Washington Post poll, but we base it on an objective standard, not a subjective standard. I have great sympathy and a extraordinary admiration uh, for Senator Portman. I consider him a friend, and I value his work in the Senate and, and think he's a, a great person. Uh, I, I think that the mistake is that we sometimes base our public policy decisions on how we feel, how we think, uh, maybe even some personal experiences, and we don't regard a lot of these issues from the standpoint of an objective standard. That's an excellent observation that Governor Huckabee is making. He's one of the few guys, the Republicans, that's actually spoken to this issue and taken a firm stand in defense of natural marriage. Governor Rick Perry has done it. And ladies and gentlemen, i got to tell you, as we're looking at 2016, this has got to be a non-negotiable. We've got to have people that are willing to speak up right now while the issue is hot, while the issue is front and center, While the tide in public opinion appears to be running against natural marriage, now is the time for people to stand up and be counted. Who's being counted on this issue? Well, Marco Rubio said something at CPAC. It was just a passing thing, but at least he said it. Governor Rick Perry, unapologetic yesterday in Texas, we believe marriage is a union of one man and one woman. Mike Huckabee out there clearly saying, look, we got to base our position here on objective standards, not the latest poll from the Washington Post. So one of those guys or somebody like him, has that's got to be the cut line. Your position on, on natural marriage has got to be the cut line. If you're not, you know, and, and, and Governor uh, Christie of New Jersey, his spokesman came out today, said, Governor Christie, please, people are born that way. So he's scientifically ignorant. He is genetically ignorant. He is biologically ignorant about the origins of homosexuality. He's not qualified to be the president of the United States. So Governor Christie is out. He doesn't make the cut. Governor Perry makes the cut. Governor Huckabee makes the cut. Uh, Rand Paul does not make the cut. Governor, I mean, uh, Senator Marco Rubio, he makes the cut uh, right now. This has got to be an absolute non-negotiable. And Huckabee's right. We've got to base this on an objective standard, not on how we feel or some personal experience. We just saw that with former uh, Senator Pressler from South Dakota. He's going to overturn 5,000 years of human history and civilization based on his interaction with homeless people who were suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome. Does that sound like a shaky basis to overturn 5,000 years of the Judeo-Christian tradition? So Mike Huckabee, and he's right, we got to base our public policy on an objective standard. And here's what he goes on to say, clip number two. If we have subjective standards, then that means that we're willing to move our standards based on the prevailing winds of culture. I think politicians have an obligation to be thermostats, not just thermometers. They're not simply to reflect the temperature of the room or the culture, as it were. Uh, They're to set um, the standards for law, for what's right, for what's wrong. Understanding not everybody's going to agree with it, not everybody's going to accept it, But uh, this is an issue that, you know, frankly, I recognize the culture is moving away from the traditional standard. But it's almost like saying, well, 
we have a basketball team and nobody on the team or very few can actually hit the goal that's 10 feet off the floor. Mm -hmm. So we're going to lower the goal down to six feet. And that way everybody can slam dunk the ball. So the question is, have you improved your uh, basketball game or have you uh, you've actually just changed the standard so it looks like you're doing better? And, and that's my concern. Yeah, so that's Governor uh, Huckabee saying, look, uh, leaders are thermostats, not thermometers. It's the responsibility of a leader to lead. That means you set the temperature in the room for other people. You're not a thermometer uh, waiting to see what the room temperature is and then adjusting to that. You set the temperature in the room. You are a thermostat, not a thermometer. And we got too many Republicans right now that just want to be thermometers. They want to stick their uh, finger in the air and see which way the wind is blowing. It reminds me, I've m mentioned this quote often, a French politician one time said, there go my people, I must follow them, for I am their leader. Now, when we come back, I want to uh, set up this uh, sound bite. It's just an audio bite, so we don't have a video to go with this. But it has to do with the fact that let's say for the sake of argument that the, the public trend is away from natural marriage. Let's say that that's accurate. I'm not absolutely sure that that is the case, frankly. Uh, I think a lot of the polling data on same-sex marriage is skewed. I think the way a lot of people read that polling data when they get asked the question, the, 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 the way they interpret the question is, do you think people should be nice to homosexuals? That's the way they read the question on same-sex marriage. They think it's mean not to let them get married. So they want to be nice to them, so they say, yeah, I support it. And all they're saying is, I think people ought to be nice to homosexuals. Everybody agrees with that. All of us agree that we ought to be nice to homosexuals. That's a whole different issue than whether we ought to call sodomy, dignify it with the term marriage. Those are two completely separate issues. So I'm not sure that the polling data is all that accurate. you got to base it on what people do in the ballot box. But assume for the sake of argument... I want to take you back to 1940, Winston Churchill, darkest days of the British Empire. The Nazis had swept over Europe. The United States was a year and a half away from giving them any help. Did Winston Churchill give up? Did he quit because the tide was running against him? We'll find out in a moment. <laughs> 